Hey everyone, welcome to this month's subscription box. This month we are doing the highly requested Stardust ring. So we've got everything you need to make that, plus a bunch of extra freebies if you wanna switch things up. Let's go ahead and open this thing up, see what's inside. All right, as you can see, there's a lot in here. So we've got a lot to go over. I'll try to make this really quick. First off, these are some of the freebies. This is Astro Dust Pigment. We finally got a bunch of new options in stock. So we just wanted to include some samples. You guys are going to get some random colors. So the first one you'll get is going to be an iridescent color. I've got iridescent purple here. And the second one is just a color color. So I've got crimson here. Both of these look awesome. We're gonna set them aside for now. I might use this one in the ring, we'll see. Um, and then here's another freebie, just 10 mixing vials. We have these available on the site, but I, we thought this would be a nice freebie to send for you guys. Um, it's just nice to have uh, a bunch of extra vials to mix stuff in, to store extra glow powder in, if you wanna separate things out, all of that. So just super handy. We thought it'd be nice to include those. And we've even got another freebie inside. Also, side note, we got these boxes back in stock. We've been wanting to send these out to you, but we just haven't had them in stock. And you know how supply chain issues have been recently. So we've got these back. Happy to include these once again. Here we go. Uh, before I get into the main ring components, here's the final freebie. So this is amethyst. I think I'm gonna use this with the iridescent purple in this ring. I think that'll be a really nice twist on the design. It should look pretty cool. But onto the main components, this is the real special good stuff we've got going on here. Starting with first, my favorite part of this whole box, cobalt chrome ring blank. This is a first. These are, it's a really expensive material, but it is well worth the cost in my opinion. This is, I'd have to say, my favorite uh, material to make a ring out of. It's got a really, really good polish that it holds. So it makes for a really professional looking ring when you're done with it. It's also fairly hard. It's not like tungsten level of hardness, but it will avoid scratches pretty often and it's not going to crack like tungsten can. And then another great thing about it, it's just how pure white it is. It looks like platinum. So that's a kind of a drawback to tungsten. It's such a like dark, moody kind of depressing color that it has. This just really stands out, looks phenomenal. So cobalt chrome, really great material. I'm happy we're gonna be able to work with it this month. Let's go ahead and get on to the next stuff. Here is aqua glow powder. This is really straightforward. You guys have seen it before. We've got enough in here to make a bunch of rings, so uh, we didn't skimp there. All right, on to inlay materials. First one we've got here, this is blue opal. I'm gonna crush these pieces up smaller and I'm only going to use a teeny tiny bit of it. I just like giving it that small amount of blue fluorescent accent that that provides. Next one is the meteorite shavings. These look awesome in this ring. If you didn't know, we don't use any pigment in this design, but it still comes out looking kind of a charcoal gray. That's because we use a lot of meteorite shavings and they're so fine that they kind of work as a pigment. But at the same time, it's metallic, so it gives it a real kind of cool shimmer effect. And it's just real small packed in there. It looks really awesome. We'll go over that more later. Third one. This is Moonstone. This is a great addition to this ring. It's fairly translucent, so it's very important to have that in a ring if you want it to be natural, because it gives it just a little bit of transparency. You'll notice like if you look at a granite countertop that's real granite, it'll, be, it'll have some depth to it, and that's because it's got like clear crystals and things in it. That's what makes granite so interesting and cool to look at, and that's why it's so hard to imitate it. So that's why we put Moonstone in there. It gives it that same similar look. And then last, but definitely not least, this is diamond dust. And these aren't the small, just like gross diamond powder that they use industrially. You can see these are a nice bright white and they're sparkly, they look great. So fairly expensive, but I'd say worth every penny. Another reason I love using diamonds in rings is just for the sentimental value. You guys know a diamond is forever. So throw some diamonds in the ring just for the sake of having it in there. And it really kind of helps bring the sentimental value out of it. So that is everything we've got going on. I know that was a ton of talking, um, but there was a lot to talk about for this box. So really excited to get into this. I'm gonna set everything I don't need aside. So I'll set aside the box. I'm gonna take out one mixing vial. I'll use that on this ring. Set the rest aside. I'm not gonna use this crimson powder. I will use this iridescent purple. If you guys get a color similar to this or just whatever, feel free to use it or not if you don't want to. And then amethyst, I'm going to use this as well. So 
everything I've got here, I'm going to use. I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping all of the materials. One thing that's unique about this ring is I mix everything together before I start inlaying it. So there's kind of a few things I need to go over for that. I'm gonna go ahead and prep the materials, get them all sorted out, measured out, and then I'll talk about the specifics of putting them all together. All right, I've got all my materials prepped how I want. The other things I'll need is an extra mixing vial as well as the glow powder. So for the opal, I pretty much just crushed this up as fine as I could. I like having the pieces in this to be very small and very subtle because opal is extremely noticeable in a ring. So you can use small pieces and it still works out great. The amethyst is a bit more subtle, so I left the pieces a bit larger. Same thing with the moonstone. I want there to be more moonstone than amethyst, so you'll notice I've set aside most of the amethyst in my extra bin, and we're just gonna use a bit of that. Um, diamond, I don't have to do anything to that, and the shavings are ready to go as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm just gonna kinda eyeball everything. You guys can do the ratios however you want. You can try to match mine as best as you can. I'm gonna start with the meteorite shavings, fill it up to a certain point, um, then I'll add the glow powder, and then just go from there. All right, I've got everything added, all of the ingredients I want and the proportions I want. It's looking great. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up. So say goodbye, pay attention to kind of the levels I've got going on here. And there we go. That's about what it should look like at this point. It kind of reminds me of like cookies and cream ice cream. We should get uh, the color, at least I'm going after. If you guys wanna switch things up, again, every single one of these sub boxes is totally up to you. So don't feel like you're doing it wrong if you're switching anything up. This should be enough for one, maybe two rings if uh, we're frugal. So I'm gonna go ahead and inlay this fairly carefully. One thing I do wanna know is on a, a uh, when you're doing a ring like this where you mix the inlay ingredients beforehand, you don't wanna do a bunch of volume because what's gonna happen if I fill this up to here is I'd get settling over time. So the first ring I make might have a lot more, uh, let's say amethyst and meteorite in it. And as you kind of shake it, you, you guys know how this works, the larger materials float to the top. So you don't wanna to make too much of this in advance. That's just kind of a nice tip for you guys. Just make a little batch, see how it goes for you guys, and you can tweak your recipe and formula, all of that. Um, a final thing I'd recommend is just make sure any of the pieces that you use, don't use anything too big because those aren't going to mix with the mixture very well. So I've got small pieces and a small overall volume. I've mixed it up nicely. As I'm making this, I'm gonna make sure that I don't get any separation of the materials. I'll just take it, put it sideways, shake it about, put it back, toss it, make sure that I've got a nice material distribution. Anyways, that's enough talking. I know I'm ranting at this point. I've got the blank ready to go here. I'm going to pull out a ring mandrel. Um, we'll get it set up on here and on the lathe and we'll go ahead and start inlaying. All right, I'll get my blank in place. Cobalt chrome is a fairly hard material so I'm not super worried about it scratching. So I'm not putting electric tape on. 
and I'm also not worried about it cracking. It's very strong, not brittle at all. So I don't need to worry about using it as a padding. So no electric tape necessary here. I'm going to be using super thin as well as medium CAs for this ring. I'm not going to be using thick at all. There's no real need for that. I'll put down a strip of medium to start off with, get in laying, and if there's ever any dry sections of the ring, that's where I'll use the super thin. And then, of course, as always, some accelerator ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and get in laying. All right, I filled it up to the brim with the inlay material, then I hardened it, gave it about five or so minutes to completely dry, and then I decided just in case there's any potential low points, I went in and I did one extra layer of medium CA over the top of it, just in case there was any little divots in there. Um, as far as inlay material goes, I've got about half of it left. It's really hard to see because it's so dusty in there, but there should be plenty to do another size 10 or smaller ring. Um, as far as the rest of the ring goes, it should be fairly straightforward. If you'll remember, we've got lots of diamond dust in here, so that will make it a bit tricky to grind down. It's such a hard material, diamond is, obviously. So I might go through quite a few Dremel bits. I've got a medium grit one on here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out for the rougher ones. We'll get that down nice and flush. I'm not worried about scratching the cobalt chrome. I don't wanna remove much of the material, but any scratches that I do with the Dremel, I'll be able to get rid of with sandpaper later. So again, cobalt chrome is just a really nice material to work with.
All right, there it is finished. Check this out. I'm really, really happy with the way this one turned out. I like the addition of the amethyst. You can see a little bit of purple right there. And the opal. I just love that. I told you guys, I, I crushed it up really small, but it's still super noticeable. I just really love all the detail the inlay has. Look, I can catch the light right there. You can see the meteorite reflecting. So, so much going on with this ring. It looks so amazing and no matter what condition you're in. If it's super bright, you can see the opal like crazy as well as the meteorite shavings reflecting. If it's dark, this thing glows fantastically. It's just such a solid ring with a really, really interesting ingredients list. So, big fan of this. Notice just how bright and pure looking the cobalt chrome is on this. That really kind of helps add to the look in my opinion. All right guys, that's everything. I would really love to see what you guys do with this, any designs that you change. Maybe you add some of the iridescent powder that we send uh, into your inlay. I think that would look awesome in one of these. So any of those little modifications and changes, whatever product names you guys come up with, I love seeing those. Make sure to join our Facebook group if you haven't already. If you have any questions, I almost guarantee you, you'll get some awesome responses over there. So we love the community we've got going on over there. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next month.